Hello everyone, welcome back to another Stata tutorial. My name is Juan and today I'm going to be talking about co-integration using the Engel and Granger two steps method. So for this tutorial I have a real example using exports and imports in Canada and we are going to be estimating the long run model, the short run model and then we will be talking a little bit about the error correction term and how to interpret the results. So I would like you to stay uh, tuned to this video so we are going to be covering all these topics and there's going to be a link in the description where you can download the data set so you can replicate all this content. Also in my website you will find a link where you can buy the do file in case you're interested in that and you will get the slides as well. So let's begin. Let's talk about co-integration. So in univariate models we have seen that a stochastic trend can be removed applying first differences. Then the stationary series can be estimated and forecast using the vox schenken three steps method. However, treating non-stationary variables in a multivariate model is not that straightforward. Why? The reason for that is because there can be a linear combination of integrated variables that is stationary. In such case, we say that the variables are co-integrated. So let's assume, as an example, here we have a model where my variable x is going to be explained by my variable y and these variables are non-stationary we could be in the presence of a spurious regression but what we can see though is that the linear combination between them makes the residuals stationary so basically these residuals are going to be i0 so how are we going to determine whether two variables are co-integrated well we are going to be using the Engel and Granger two steps method where in the first step, we're going to test the variables for their order of integration. As a note, the variables have to be of the same integration order. This is, if your variable is non-stationary in levels, but is stationary in first differences, then all the variables need to be stationary in first differences. If you have a variable that is stationary in second differences, and then another one in third differences, so this type of models then is not going to be appropriate. You have to ensure all the variables are of the same integration order. Once we verify that, we're going to be estimating the long run equilibrium model using OLS. We're going to save the residuals and we're going to test if those residuals are stationary. So estimating the long run model is only regressing Y on your other variable, in this case would be Z and a constant. If the variables are co-integrated, the OLS estimates will yield super consistent parameters beta 0 and beta 1 as they converge faster than they do using stationary variables. And finally, the augmented decay filter statistics are not valid for the residual unit group test. Why? Because the residuals are not observable. So once we save the residuals of this regression, we're going to be using the statistic, but what we are not going to be using are the critical values. And the reason for that is because we cannot be relaying on the critical values of a unit group test on a series that is the result of a regression. And the step number two of the Engel and Granger method, if the variables are co-integrated, we are going to then estimate the error correction model, which is normally called the short run model, and we are going to be performing some model diagnostics. So for today's example, I have a case about trade. In this case, I have my variables export and import for Canada from the years 1961 to 2005, it's quarterly data. So the first thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to be checking for stationarity and we have to make sure that the variables are integrated of the same order. In state, I have here my data already. Um, X stands for the exports and M for imports. And the first thing that I would like to do is to plot a graph. So I'm going to type TS line and I'm going to type X and M. Here we get the graph and what we can see is that these two variables are moving along together. So although these variables are non-stationary, we can see that these variables uh, do stick together over time. We can see that sometimes exports exceed imports and for our moments here imports exceed exports. But otherwise these variables are moving closely together. So the main idea of these type of models um, where I'm just using exports and imports is the fact that if imports increase too much then countries will have a negative trade balance so eventually exports will have to grow up again and exceed imports right so this is a case where it's an equilibrium a long-run equilibrium model where imports cannot be bigger than exports forever at some moment these variables will have to stick closer together 
So this is an example where variables can be co-integrated um, and we're going to be testing for this. The next thing that I would like to do is to generate my variables in logs and the reason for that is because then we are going to be able to interpret the results as elasticities. This is as a percentage term. So I'm going to type gen for would be for generate and then I'm going to assign a name I would like to call LX and we're going to type log of X and here we get now our variable LX which is basically the logarithm of um, of my variable exports and we're going to do the same for LM for my imports um, so I type log of imports and here now we have generated the variable as well so the next step then is checking for stationarity. I'm going to conduct the DK filler test on my variables and logs. So I'm typing D filler and then my variable name is LX. Here we get the result. Remember the null hypothesis is that my series has a unit root, therefore it would be non-stationary. And we can see that um, this value here, the p-value is 0.15, which is bigger than 0 0.05. So at the 5% significance level, we are um, saying that my variable has a unit root and therefore it is non-stationary. So let's do the same now with exports. I'm going to type, sorry, with imports. So I'm typing LM. Um, and here we get the results for imports. Um, similarly, my variable is non-stationary because it's bigger than 0 0.05. At the 5% significance level, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of the existence of a unit root. So I confirm both my variables, exports and imports, are non-stationary levels. But remember what we need to confirm now is that they both are going to be integrated of the same order. Now what we need to verify is if my variables are going to be integrated of the same order. So I'm going to do the filler test again, but now on my variable in differences. So I'm type D dot and now the log of exports. And we can see now that this value is smaller than 0 0.05. We are uh, therefore saying that my variable is stationary in first differences. So I'm going to do the same now, dfuler, but for imports. So I'm going to type d.lm. And here we get the results. We can see that my variable is stationary in first differences as well. So the first part, checking stationarity and ensuring that my variables are integrated of the same order is correct. Both my variables are stationary in first differences. So next thing that we're going to do then is to estimate the long run regression. So the long run regression is just estimating the single OLS model. So I'm going to type then regress. Then I'm going to use my variable log of exports explained by logs of imports. And I'm just going to hit enter and here I get my results. So here from this result, what we can see is that the, the coefficient, the imports, is statistically significant. What this is saying to us is that imports does help to explain exports. The constant is appropriate in this model as well. Um, and what is the interpretation of the coefficient? This coefficient is telling me that if imports increase by 1%, exports are going to increase by 1%. 0.02%. Okay, so in the long run, exports are increasing more than imports, and that's that's good, right? That's going to keep a positive uh, trade balance. So what we need to do now is we need to save the residuals. We have already estimated this long run model. We regress the X on M, and we have to after saving the residuals, we have to perform the augmented Dickey filler test on the residuals, and we need to use the regression test table. So if my variable, if my error term is um, I0, my variables are going to be co-integrated. Recall that the statistics of the augmented decay filler are not appropriate and we need to use the table values. So let's go to Stata then and save the residuals, do the decay filler test, and then check if my variables are co-integrated. In Stata, in order to obtain the residuals of the series, I'm going to type predict then I'm going to assign a name to my series. I would like to call it error, then comma and type residuals. So what you're going to be getting then is this new variable called error, which are going to be the residuals of my long run regression. And the next thing that I would like to do is to summarize um, the, um, the values of this error. So I type enter in here, 
and we obtain, you see, the standard deviation, the minimum value, the max value, and we obtain the mean. This mean, as you can see, is very close to zero. That's good. I'm going to copy this value, and I'm going to make now a graph of my error. So I'm going to type TS line error, and then I'm going to include, um, I type Y line, and I'm going to include this mean in the graph. So we hit enter now. And as you can see, we get this line around the mean. And the errors, you can see that they wiggle consistently around this mean. There are two periods where probably it takes a little bit more to go back to, you know, to the mean value. However, these residuals um, do look like they are going back to the mean. But let's do now the augmented DQ filler test on the residuals and see whether my residuals um, are, you know, are, don't have a unit root and are stationary. So we're going to type the fuller, then I'm going to type error, and I'm going to tell state that there's no constant in this series. So here we obtain the results. I'm obtaining the, the T statistic, it's negative 3.431, and here we get the critical values of the test. Remember, it's very important that we are not going to use these critical values. And the reason for that is because, as I mentioned, we cannot relay on these critical values for a series that is coming out of our regression. It's a non-observable series. So what we're going to do then is we're going to use the cointegration tables. So I'm going to copy this value. And let's go now to the slides. I'm going to show you how the cointegration test table looks like. Here I have the cointegration test table. The way that you would be using this table is here you, you have the number of variables. As you know, we have exports and imports, it's two variables. So that's we are going to be using then the first um, this first part. Um, we have close to 200 observations, so I'm going to be using sample size 200. And then we have the 10% and 5% critical values. So I'm going to be copying these two values. And in the next slide, I'm going to make a graph where I'm going to show you how to decide then if my variables are co-integrated or not based on these critical values. In the graph, I have here the 10% critical values and the 5% critical values. And here is the value that we obtain from the augmented Dickey filler test. We can see that this is the non-rejection area where the null hypothesis is that my series has a unit root. Um, therefore, my variable would be not stationary and would confirm that my variables are not co-integrated. But this is not the case for our example. We see that we fall in the rejection area. We are rejecting that my series has a unit root. So we are saying that my variables are stationary and the, the variables are co-integrated. Yes, the residuals are, are I0, they are stationary. So this will be confirming that exports and imports in the long run, they do have a relationship and they are these variables do have a long run equilibrium. So as you can see, using the tables can be a lengthy process. You need to use the co-integration tables and you also need to use the augmented the filler test. This is a bit time consuming. So Stata has already a test where they are using already the, the well, the Granger test that is going to tell us whether or not these variables are co-integrated. So in this case, we can use this other method. As I mentioned, we can put aside the table and we can implement the co-integration test provided by Stata. So you're going to conduct the England Granger test using the eGranger command in Stata. And for this, you need to install the option in Stata. So just some observations, the Granger test is a residual based test for co-integration. The test is simply a unit root test applied to the residual series. And the null hypothesis is that my series are not co-integrated. So rejecting the null hypothesis will result in our series being co-integrated. So let's go into Stata and let's work on this method, which is going to be more straightforward than using the tables. The first thing that you need to do is to install this command. So you have to type SSC, install, and then eGranger. You hit enter and here is checking, you know, whether you have already this installed and if you don't have it, it's going to install it for you. And the next thing that you need to type then is the command eGranger and you have to include in this test the variables that you would like to check. So I would like to check if LX, my exports in logs and my exports, uh, sorry, and my imports in logs are, are co-integrated. So I hit enter. 
And as you can see, we are obtaining in here, look, negative 3.431, the same value that my Dicky Fuller test. See, this is the Dicky Fuller test. Remember, we got negative 3.431. So this is fine. And the reason for this is because, as I mentioned, we are still using the augmented Dicky Fuller test, but what we cannot use are the critical values from the Dicky Fuller test. As you can see, these critical values are different, right? And if we recall, these critical values are going to be the same from, from the table, okay? So here, basically, if my test statistic, this value uh, in absolute terms is bigger uh, than the 5% critical value, so you see 3.43 uh, is bigger in absolute values than uh, 3.37, then what we are saying is that my variables are co-integrating. Okay, we're falling in the rejection area. So that's basically the interpretation of this test, and that's the way that you can do this test. All right, is instead of using the tables, just use the eGranger command. The next step now is estimating the error correction model. So we have already estimated the long run model. My variables are non-stationary levels, but we have determined that my variables are co-integrated. Um, we have determined this using both the tables and the eGranger test. So now what we have to do is estimate the short run model. So this short run model is also called the error correction model. And how are we going to estimate this? Well, the short run model, um, you need to use the variables in differences. This is using the stationary form. And then we need to incorporate to the model the error correction term, which are going to be the residuals of the long run regression but lagged one period. So in other words, all we have in here is the residuals of the long run model, but you see lagged one period. And this is going to be the, um, the short run model. As I mentioned, these um, variables have to be in their stationary form. That's why you see here I included uh, this symbol, stands for differences. My exports are in differences. Imports are in differences. And we are including the error correction term lagged one period so we are including this term okay so if you plug this equation which is equation one in equation two this is you plug this in here you're going to obtain the error correction model okay so this is basically the short run model we're back in stata and i'm going to show you now how to estimate the short run model i have included here the equation so then you can see what we are trying to estimate so we're going to type regress, and remember we said that the variables have to be in first differences, that's in their stationary form. So I'm going to then regress the exports. I'm going to type d dot lx, and remember that d dot is telling that you need to use this variable in first differences. Then I'm going to use imports as well, difference, uh, first differences, so I'm going to type d dot lm. And then we need to include the error term. For the error term, as I mentioned, are the residuals of the long run regression, which we call them errors, but lagged one period. So I'm going to use the command L dot, so that's telling state I use the first lag of my variable error. All right, so here then, then we have this equation in here. And we have the exports in first differences, we have imports in first differences, and we have the error term, lagged one period. I'm going to hit enter. And here we obtain the results. As you can see in these results, um, the, the coefficients are all statistically significant, so that's good. And another thing that you have to see in here is that my variable imports um, is 0.63. So this is telling me that when um, imports increase by 1%, exports are going to increase by 0.63%. So here you see that there is a discrepancy between the long run and the short run. In the short run, um, exports are going to increase in a slower pattern. Yes, so there's going to be a disequilibrium that has to be fixed by the error correction term. So we are going to be going back to the slides and I'm going to do an analysis of how to interpret both the long run and the short run model and the error correction term. So let's first start talking about the error correction term. So the error correction term is that term that we had included in the short run model. And this coefficient has to be between negative one and zero. 
is values out of the range are explosive results, and you need to review and re-estimate your model. This coefficient determines the speed of adjustment towards the long-run equilibrium. Remember that any disequilibrium in the short run will be fixed. Yes, it's going to be corrected by this error term. And if this error term is, um, is very small, then the variables, uh, the, this disequilibrium is going to be fixed, but in a very slow pattern, okay? So that's why they also use this speed of adjustment um, concept, right? This how, how, how long it's going to take, basically, for the disequilibrium between the long run and the short run just to fix. Um, so basically then the deviations, this is what I just mentioned, from the long run equilibrium are corrected gradually by the error correction term through a series of partial short run adjustments. So I have in here the two models. We have the short run and the long run model. Remember, this is the long run model, as I mentioned, a 1% increase in imports is going to increase exports by 1.02%. However, in the short run, here we have um, that my imports, uh, when increases 1%, exports are only going to increase 0.64%. Um, so a bit more than half um, is going to be increasing. Um, and this is the error correction term. As you can see, it's negative, so that's good. And this 0.11. Yeah, so we're going to be analyzing this value now a little bit uh, with more detail. So including here the two, this table is going to be helpful for you guys to also check the following things. This first is a long run model. I only included this estimated coefficient in here. And we don't have an error correction term because that's the long run model. But in the short run model, we do have it. We see that in all the cases, the p-values are smaller than 0.05. So all these variables are appropriate. So this is what I wrote in here. The error correction term is statistically significant. And as you can see, the coefficient is negative 0.1165, right? So how do we interpret that result? Is Well, it's suggesting us that almost 12% of the discrepancy between the long run and the short run is corrected within a quarter. Remember, we are using quarterly data. So this error correction term is going to be basically fixing the discrepancy between the long and the short run, 12% per period, yes? And a period is a quarter. So basically it's gonna take almost two years, um, you know, to fix uh, the discrepancy between the long run and the short run model. So now we have estimated the model, we have the long run and short run model. We need to finish the analysis doing some model diagnostics. So we're going to start checking the, the normality test of the residuals. We're going to use a, the first test, which is the shafiro wilk test for the normal data. The null hypothesis is that my residuals are normally distributed. So we're going to be conducting then this test. Let's go into Stata and let's do this test. In Stata, the first thing that we will need to do then is to obtain the residuals of my series. So I'm going to type predict. Now I would like to call this series just residuals. So I'm going to type residuals and then comma residuals. So here we have then assigned a name for the residuals of my regression. We can also do a line as well, a graph. So let's type TS line residuals to see how do my residuals look like. And you can see that this does look stationary is wiggling around the um, wiggling around the mean. It looks to be looks to have a proper um, behavior. So what we can do now is do the normality test for the residuals. So I'm going to type SWILK, so that's for the Shafiro test, and then I'm going to type residuals. And here remember that the null hypothesis of my test for normal data is that my data is normal. And as you can see, the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05. So at the 5% significance level, we are saying that my residuals look normal. And the last thing that we would like to test is for serial correlation. We are going to conduct a permanent test for white noise, where my null hypothesis is that my residuals are white noise. Um, so let's go to Stata and finish then with this analysis. We are going to type in Stata WN test Q, and then we type residuals again. 
And as you can see here, we have the Portmanteau test for white noise. And you can see that the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05, slightly bigger than 0 0.05. So um, we are saying then that my residuals are white noise. So this is going to be all the analysis for today. We have covered both the short run model and the long run model, as well as the co-integration tests. And I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you would like to get more content related to time series and forecasting. I will be covering topics as arch models, garch models. We are going to talk then a little bit about structure of our models and we may get into DSG models as well. So if those are all topics that you're interested in, just feel free to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more content. Thank you very much for watching.